you know, I had an example of somebody uh, who was just perverted, you know, kind of being on that on on that type of time to where uh, he was implying that he could help me, you know, if I could do some stuff for him, you know, and, and implying like sexual favors and stuff. You know, I'm of the freedom of speech, you know, I'm of the other side of the non-disclosure agreements, the, the agreements. You know, we, we talked about that a little bit on on the panel on at the um at the convention about contracts and, and being smart. And then you had the song The Devil's Playground, you won that with Sean Carey and I believe Minister Will Murray. Yeah, Will Murray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in that you have you start talking about things and we know the wickedness behind the music industry on things that people tried to make you do to compromise your manhood and you walked out of there very aggressively. And then but on the flip end, when you looked at the gospel genre, unfortunately. I don't want to say it was more the same, but you realize that this industry is what it is. Talk about that time. Talk about that time when you had to kind of stand on your own ten toes and go against somebody that was trying to do some violation stuff. And then talk about your time throughout the gospel industry within the music industry itself yeah, and yeah. how you perceive the industry as a whole. Yeah. So there was a there was a time where I was um, what you might call vulnerable, meaning I had just walked away from my job as a teacher. Um, and I, I was seeing some success, you know, in the in the music industry. I was seeing some success, um, uh, but I hadn't all the way like popped off to where I had any type of stability as a full time rapper as D one. So it, it's like you walked away from stability of being a teacher. You haven't fully popped off yet. You're in this real vulnerable time. During that time, I'm doing a lot of networking. I'm doing a lot of um, trying to get my name out there and trying to prove myself to whoever I feel has a platform that could uh that could help me, you know. Um some people in in life, you know, and I know that attractive women go through this all the time. Imagine the attractive women who just want to make an honest living and want a job and the their the boss at this company just so happened to be some dude that's undressing them with his eyes. As soon as they walk through the door like, "Oh, oh, you want to work here?" For real. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like and you got to go through me to get the job. So right. yeah, so and, and so many people use that to their advantage to um to take advantage of of people and a lot of people fall victim you know to to these uh to these uh instances um somebody actually tried me like that man uh, another man in the music industry this man actually tried me like that you know cuz i was equivalent to young hungry rapper like man i'm just trying to get on i'm just trying to get on da 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 and instead of people being like i like your hustle bro i like your hustle i like your talent I'm gonna give you a shot. You know, I had an example of somebody uh, who was just perverted. You know, kind of being on that on on that type of time to where uh, he was implying that he could help me. You know, if I could do some stuff for him. You know, and, and implying like sexual favors and stuff. And man, once it clicked to me, see, bro, I think I, I think people I think people play with me sometimes. You heard me because they like, okay, yeah, he's from New Orleans. Um, and 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 he you know he from the streets and whatnot but d1 is not no gangster d1 don't even claim to be a gangster d1 don't even carry off that energy like he gonna go in his waistline you know what i'm saying waistband and pull out a gun on me so because of that i think some people be like yeah i'm gonna see how far i could you know like 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 push him and i think that this was just one of them ones, you know, and uh, and he found out real quick how I was coming, you know, mm -hmm. uh, no pun intended. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> pause, you hear me? Pause, but uh, but but, <laughs> but 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 he found he found out, man, and um, and that was that was that was something I rapped about on that song, The Devil's Playground. I did, and um, and then I talk about uh, me seeing some more success, and then I start to uh get over into the space of like uh christian hip-hop and start to meet some of them cats and that community starts to embrace me because i am a christian and although i didn't make my name as like oh d1 is a christian rapper still when they you know when i didn't know what christian rap really was to tell you the truth once i started finding out about it and i'm like man they got a whole world over here i'm like that's dope i'm excited i'm like wait they got more people that's on what i'm on like mentally and heart wise mm -hmm. like we got the same beliefs, bet, and y'all rap, man, bet, and I'm excited to like 
meet more of these people and do this. And I find out real, real quick, man, that uh, just because people saying that they, you know, uh, God first and God fearing and identifying as Christian or gospel artist, man, it's just as cutthroat, man. And I've experienced some of the most backstabbing behavior from some artists who are like Christian artists and Christian hip hop artists. And I've seen people be jealous. And you know how Birdman talked about that envy, you heard me? Mm -hmm. And I didn't seen that envy firsthand, bro. And that stuff just really, and that was early on with me finding out about this, uh, the, you know, the, the, that side of the, the game. And it, it just, it just kind of, it disappointed me, man. It disappointed me. I tried not to have expectations for people, but, um, but I did have some higher expectations for certain people and I just really got disappointed, bro. So um, at that point, I would say that just really all the way like matured me as a as a as an artist. It, it matured me to to know and understand this game is the devil's playground. No matter what side of the industry you're on, or if you got you know uh, a brand and a presence on on both sides of the industry, this game is the devil's playground. If you're going to choose to be in this game, you have to be able to navigate these waters, and you have to understand that. Um, this is something that can't like turn you off, you know, so much so that you um that you don't want to participate in anymore. And and that's the decision I kind of had to make during that time. I chose to double down and say, I'm gonna jump in this thing. And I play the game. Just like they said, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. It was like I'm gonna play this game, but I'm not gonna become um just a a, a pawn, you know, to this game. You know, I'm gonna remain a king the whole time. Go. And did you have a situation at one point with uh, RCA Records? I did. I did. I, that's what I signed with after the cash money uh, situation didn't work out. Um, I didn't know. It's not like I had competing offers at the same time. Um, right. I didn't. I, I, I walked away from the cash money situation, and I didn't know if anything was going to be out there. But um, uh, next thing you know, uh really kind of like out the blue. I mean, I kept buzzing. I kept doing my thing, making moves, but um, I get approached by RCA Records and that was uh, a major label. That was a huge, mm -hmm. huge opportunity for me. And I did end up taking that deal and I ended up um, partnering with them, signing to them. Let me, let me not lie and act like I, uh, like I had this, you know, like, oh, I was a boss in that situation. No, I was an artist signed to a record deal. You know what I mean? So uh, there's there's limited leverage that comes along with that when you're signed just to a label. You're not you're not coming in there as like, hey, this is something where it's a joint venture deal and it's something where I got my own bag and we're going to da da da. Nah, it wasn't that. So I was signed to them. Yep. And I was signed to a major label. Dream come true, honestly. Um, that was always the goal for a long time when I started rapping was to sign to a major label. And I did, I did, uh, I did. So I have, um, I have that under my belt. Um, mm -hmm. I learned, uh, we had some good times together and then uh, ultimately I outgrew that situation and, and I didn't feel like that situation was, um, was was beneficial for me anymore and, and i really really outgrew that situation um and yep and i and i i could have looked y'all i could have become i could have i could still be signed to them honestly um mm -hmm. i could still be signed to them and and it's not that the division i was signed to i say that the division of rca that i was signed to it was just it wasn't even RCA anymore. The division I was signed to, it got bought out by another company, and I'm not even trying to get them no publicity, to be honest with you. But uh, but uh, so you know, shout out to RCA for sure. But this division that that bought out, you know, uh, part of RCA that I ended up getting signed to, man, it was just, it was, it was so dysfunctional, and I was like the guinea pig over there, and I could still be signed to him, man, but I had uh. I had an angel, bro. I had an angel who um who came into my life who who was able to uh get me out of that contract when you know I, I think I still owed them like Slingshot David album came out with them. Um after that, I think I still owed them like three more albums. And 
the way labels work and it's so slow in terms of how often they allow you to drop yeah. that mm. three albums i probably would have still been signed to them for about another five years you know yeah. um um, yeah. and, and I was able to get out of my deal though. So everything after that, everything after Slings, I did it. Oh God, that girl, nigga said, that oh album. God, you the man, Cass. I spit white like a clan mask, and I'm a hustler. I could stand out on the beach and sell sandbags. Some things can last, but this ain't just a podcast. This is Sam Ant and Oh God, Cass. Hip hop uncensored is the vibe, so subscribe. Hip hop uncensored is the vibe, so subscribe. Oh God, driving Sam and riding passenger side, and you heard it out the mouth of the greatest rapper alive. Hip hop uncensored is the vibe, so subscribe. Hip hop uncensored is the vibe, so subscribe. Oh God, driving Sam and riding passenger side, and you heard it out the mouth of the greatest rapper alive. Go gang.